Welcome everyone to episode 410 of the Thumbstick Athletes Podcast. I'm your host, Dan. Um, well. Uh, today's topic is going to be our E3 2019 preview predictions episode. We do one of these just about every year. At least I think we have since since about when we started. We're, we normally do it right before E3, but we didn't this year because next week's episode is going to be on Felseal, which I'll talk a little bit about later on in the episode because I played a little bit of it. Um, but we're going to do that next week. We had just debated on whether or not we were going to do that this week or next week. Um, but it turns out Corey couldn't join us this week, so we decided to have our E3 preview predictions episode this week instead. Um, mostly preview, a little bit of predictions. Uh, I don't know, maybe some bold predictions, Will. I'm trying to think if I can come up with anything bold, honestly. Yeah, because I, I like to do bold but also plausible, not yeah. just something like wild. You know, yeah, like like, you can... like Microsoft and Sony are going to merge as companies. Like, that's not yeah, it's not plausible. plausible. Yeah, that'll <laughs> never happen. No. So you want to keep it on the believable side, yeah. but still bold. Yeah, possible. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Yeah. So uh, teasers for later on the episode. Do you have anything you want to tease, Will? Um, I played Fell Seal. Played like 20 hours of Fell Seal. I mm-hmm. probably kind of wait to talk. I mean, obviously, yeah. we're doing an episode, so I won't give too much of a, um, my thoughts on it. Uh, I started Persona 5, Ooh. but again, I only put maybe an hour in, mm-hmm. so uh, I probably won't give too many thoughts okay. on that. Uh, I'm trying to think if I played anything else, but I don't think so. Yeah, our Fell Seal discussion will probably be mostly first impressions. Yeah. So, uh, the only thing I have to tease for later on the episode is I watched the the game of thrones documentary Mm -hmm. um that was kind of the send-off to the to the last season it was i was like an hour and a half it was a hair under two hours uh so i'll talk a little bit about that i won't spoil anything for anyone that hasn't seen it but yeah um it was it was it was quite impressive so Mm -hmm. i'll talk a little bit about that during my week so uh main segment uh e3 2019 preview predictions so this year ea and sony are not officially taking part in the conference lineup um ea is doing their own thing it's called ea play it's a separate event i believe it's still in los angeles and not far but it's not in the main part of the thing and apparently there was invitations and stuff they are they do have uh, a schedule of events where they're going to be streaming stuff for their game so i'll get that get to that um sony at least as of now has announced anything uh what what they're doing for for e3 uh they some people thought they might do a nintendo direct style presentation but as of yet there's there's nothing so which is surprising it's very surprising that they're not not doing something um maybe they aren't yeah i don't know it's hard to say but i don't know if it's a money saving thing or i know i know there's a lot of distractions during e3 so but you know it gives microsoft and nintendo a chance to flex take the spotlight yeah Yeah. that's for sure so uh so yeah first off we'll start with ea play so ea play starts um i believe it starts on saturday june 8th so that's the first thing that happens um so at 9 30 is this all on the same day what the the micro or not the microsoft the bethesda no, I'm talking about just the EA stuff. Um, oh. So EA, yeah, yeah it'll be, be begin Saturday, uh, June 8th at 9.15 a.m. Pacific, 12.15 Eastern. Um, that's going to be countdown. To, uh, this, that, uh, they must have all their big stuff right off the bat. Uh, so they're going to be talking about Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. It's going to be hosted by Greg Miller and Andrea Renee, uh, a couple, couple of big names in the in the gaming space. Um, I think that's what everyone wants to see from this. Uh, you know, you have your Battlefield stuff, Battlefield Five. Uh, you got FIFA, Madden, The Sims. Eh, you know. <laughs> Honestly, like the only thing that I think might be semi-interesting is obviously going to be Star Wars, but maybe for people who like the game Apex. Yep, Apex Legends is going to be at ten ten a.m. So that so... stuff all must be on Saturday. That's that's what it looks like. So Saturday morning. Yeah, uh, or afternoon, early afternoon for us, us Easter East Coasters. 
I mean, honestly, EA has nothing that I'm really interested in because I'm not even a big Star Wars fan. So right, yeah, you're the least the uh, least Star Wars fan out of out of the four of us. So yeah, like I think the game's gonna be cool, and I'll probably get it if it looks pretty cool. But like, I'm not like, oh man, a AAA Star Wars, I'm I'm all in, yeah. you know. So yeah. honestly, I, yeah, it's got nothing for me unless no. they announce something like Mass Effect related, like the trilogy remastered. That would right. probably be the thing that would get me the most excited. The only thing people think they might surprise us with is Dragon Age, something Dragon Age. Okay, uh, Dragon Age Four. So, boy, not a lot to way. care about there. They might, they <laughs> no. might, they might do some something with Titanfall, uh, but we don't know. Yeah, I mean Anthem's dead pretty much there was that news story that's got less players than battlefield one really yeah i hadn't heard that so i mean it's not doing well i don't even think battlefield 5 is doing very well either so they're in not a good spot apex legends is like the only big money making thing they've got right now yeah and it came out of nowhere too which was the the biggest surprise of it all (laughs) Mm -hmm. and actually i just read that it's dropped revenue 71 percent sure yeah, so, after that initial, I mean, it'll have its hardcore players, but after that initial boost that it got right off the bat, I think people kind of went back to Fortnite and and whatever other games they're playing. Yeah, I, I would. Would you say Apex is bigger than PUBG? I I really don't know. I don't I don't follow either one of those or even Fortnite at all. Uh, it's not really in my wheelhouse as far as like what's being played on Twitch. Um, the people that I follow on Twitch are you that that play that style of game play apex legends I don't, none of the people i follow play uh PUBG at all they'll play fortnite um that's probably the most popular one but then a little bit of apex legends so i took note of this the other day and i remember apex was ahead of PUBG, but right now PUBG is ahead of apex okay on twitch yeah gotcha uh so that's it for for uh EA, their conference was usually the worst for me. I, I usually always hated them, their their conferences. So I'm I'm kind of glad they decided to go this route and and you know I'll catch the Star Wars thing and that's that'll be it for me. I'm not I won't watch any any of the other stuff for it. Yeah. So uh, next up on the list, so the actual conferences start with Microsoft, which is going to be on 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific on Sunday, June 9th. Uh, we will probably see something for Halo Infinite. We'll probably see Gears 5. We'll probably see a new Forza. Um, I've heard a few Fable 4 rumors. Of course, that's being developed now by P- Playground Games, who did uh, Forza Horizon. We'll probably see something from Project X Cloud. Um, but I'm really hoping we also see their new console. Uh, it's Project Scarlet right now. Nothing. No details have been released on it so far yet, but that, you know this would be a good time, especially since Sony is not going to be at E3. It would get all the attention. A uh, couple things with that. Yeah, I think we're definitely going to see something Halo Infinite related. I think, mm-hmm. I mean, that's their biggest IP at this point. Yeah. Um, maybe we'll see something about that Gears turn-based game. Oh, I forgot. They're making a Gears strategy game. I think, yeah, I'm actually, I could care less about Gears, but I think that's a cool, cool idea. To it do. is a very cool idea. You're right. I completely forgot about that. They announced it, was it last year at E3 or two years it, ago at E3? Last year, and we got nothing on it so far. Yeah, I, I completely forgot that even existed. Um, so that's cool. Uh, probably new, th- uh, We I'm hoping we see things from, from their newly acquired studios, uh, Undead Labs, Compulsion, and Ninja Theory. Yeah. Um, we don't know. I think we definitely get the new fable yeah i remember predicting that, this last year and it didn't still nothing yeah but... i mean I, I my my next thing on my list is what do we need to see what do we want to see from microsoft uh, and that's my top one actually is is fable fable 4 if, if anything's going to get me excited about xbox again it, it's fable 4 um, yeah i know they're okay. they've been typically like overhyped um but they've ended up being like decent rpgs and uh, with Fable 2, in my opinion, being being the best of the bunch. Yeah, I mean, I've always really liked all of the Fables, Fable games. I kind of thought... I feel like Fable 2 and 3 got kind of maligned a little bit, uh, a little unnecessarily, because I thought I loved the games, personally. Yeah. Um, 
you know, as you said, they're a little disappointing. I wasn't really paying attention to the hype at that point anyway. I just kind of like secondhand and played it from like you and Corey. But yeah. um, so I'm really excited for that one. That's I'm with you. That's probably the thing I want to see the most of, followed by probably new console stuff because mm-hmm. Sony started already putting out details on their new console. Yeah. Um, it's weird, like, they haven't said they're making it, but they've put details out, so it's like, they haven't confirmed that they're making it out, but have put out details. It's, like, really weird how they're yeah, doing it, it this, this go-around. Um, yeah, I really think one thing they need to address is, will digital games purchases from the Xbox One convert over to the next Xbox? And PlayStation, I believe I heard PlayStation is doing that, so any digital games you own that you bought through the PS4, and maybe even PS3 um will carry over onto the ps5 that's that's got to be there one of my biggest complaints about the consoles is having to rebuy all these games when a new console comes out you know and for the longest time nintendo was was good about the the backwards compatibility but the switch obviously is not yeah um which is probably my biggest complaint about it at this point my probably i would say my only complaint about it is that i have all these games that i bought and digitally too that 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 don't work on it and I would love for a way to get those to work on it. That would be great. But, Dan, you don't want to buy Final Fantasy VII again on your new Xbox and PlayStation? <laughs> well, I'm going to buy it on the Switch. You better yep. believe that. At some Same point, here. I will buy it. Um, it just sucks because that's a good way for them to make money for little to no effort. And yeah. uh, One thing they did, too, with, uh, I believe it was the <clears throat> Wii U eShop, was they just charged you like a couple dollars to upgrade your library to be able to play on the Wii U. Like if you owned a game on the Wii, Digital Shop, if you paid like a dollar for Mario, you could get it on the Wii U. And I would love to see something. I would pay a few bucks for all the games to transfer over or 10 Yeah, or definitely. I would too. That would absolutely be fine. Um, so yeah, they, they need to address a lot of that stuff. Like you, I would love to see new new console stuff. Um, platform exclusives for their, for their new studios definitely have to have those uh sony is eating microsoft's lunch in the in the plat in the exclusives oh man category there's not even um, a competition yeah i mean despite my love i i like gears a lot the forza horizon games have been fantastic but uh the, you can't compare it to sony's exclusives not even close yeah definitely so uh, and then i would love to see keyboard and mouse support for more games that's one thing they pumped up i don't know if it was last year's e3 or the year, the year before um, accessibility is a big thing for them. They have the the accessibility controller. I can't think of the name of it right now, um, but it's that big controller with all the inputs in it for for uh, disabled uh, gamers to be able to experience the games the way they can. They they can. Um, so I would love to see more keyboard and mouse support for for yeah. more games. That would that would uh, solve a lot of my problems with playing shooters on a on a console. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. I actually was just listening to a podcast with like one of the guys was saying he doesn't think he can play shooters with a uh, key a controller anymore. Yeah, thought, thought of you. Once you get used to it, like I, I just can't. I'm terrible, and it's not fun. It's just not. Yeah. So I wish I could get the hang of it again, but I, I just can't. It's it's brutal. And even the Switch like is has spoiled me because of the the motion. You know, I, I talk about Breath of the Wild all the time, and the aiming in that, I'll get as close as I can with the with the, I guess it's the right stick. And then I'll, you know, I'll tilt it and I'll fine tune my aim. And that's like so intuitive and so perfect. Yeah. Even something like that would work for me. And I, I, but the, the Xbox controller doesn't have tilt controls. The DualShock 4 does, but it's just not used that way. Yeah. Um, which is unfortunate. So, yeah, that's Microsoft. Anything else you'd like to see from Microsoft? Not really. I mean, I don't even know what. Th- other than what we've said, like, yeah, I think Halo, Fable, Xbox stuff, new Xbox stuff, I think that's about it. And that, I hope they have something for me that I don't know that I want. Yeah. You know no, I, I mean? Yeah, I, yeah, the big surprise. Yeah. Like, I don't know, maybe they show off Cyberpunk here, get a release date, maybe. Yeah, Cyberpunk is going to make an appearance at E3. Uh, they, no, they didn't specify where, if it's going to be part of one of the, one of the bigger press conferences or or what but it is going to be there in some capacity so yeah i think it was rumored that they're it's definitely getting a release date oh that's good i think i read that but I Pro- I'm, I'm gonna guess early next year early Pro- 2020 is my thought that's definitely probably what i'm thinking too it's hard though because like everyone now like wants to believe all these crazy things 
so maybe yeah. it won't be. So yeah, no, definitely. It's it's hype gets out of control a little bit this time of the year. So yeah, like oh, did you know blah 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 is gonna get announced, and then it yeah. never does. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mother three confirmed. <laughs> that they should honestly. They should. I agree. Uh, moving on, Bethesda's up next, so their conference is going to be at 8.30 p.m. Eastern, uh, 5.30 Pacific on Sunday, June 9th. Uh, we will probably hear some updates for Fallout 76 and Elder Scrolls Online, probably see some stuff for Elder Scrolls Blades and Elder Scrolls Legends, probably going to see Doom Eternal. Um, I'm really hoping we see something from Elder Scrolls 6 or Starfield other than like a logo screen i they said no yeah oh they they confirmed no okay yeah. dang it um i'm hoping for a new fallout a surprise fallout announcement uh an actual fallout announcement i don't know if that would be received well well uh, yeah i mean <laughs> people would probably be uh waiting with bated breath on that one because of the i mean cluster it... f that's fallout 76 if i'm bethesda i'm literally not even bringing up fallout 76 other than maybe i mentioned yeah I'll be honest, the only thing I'm, you know, kind of looking at that might be kind of cool is Elder Scrolls Online stuff, but I'm not even going to play that. Yeah. So, honestly, Bethesda is probably the conference. I have them up there with EA for how little I care that they're probably going to show. Yeah. I was interested last year when they announced Rage 2. I, I, was, I was jazzed for that. I haven't ended up getting it. Yeah, but a lot of that's because my computer's not quite powerful enough anymore to, to play stuff like that. So that's, that's yeah. a large part of the reason. Um, I mean, I mean, yeah, like, what is there anything in Bethesda's, Dan, that you were like... Not that I can think of. I mean, I'm excited for Starfield and to see what that's about. Um, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic about Elder Scrolls VI. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't, as much as I would love to see a new Fallout announcement, I don't think we're going to get that. I mean, if it follows the pecking order of Elder Scrolls Fallout, Elder Scrolls Fallout, we're a ways from it, but yeah, um, you never know. Maybe another Wolfenstein? They're actually going to be showing off, uh, man, one of those side Wolfenstein games. I yeah, isn't remember. it a mech game? Yeah. That's right. Which, I haven't played the other Wolfensteins yet. They're on my list. Yeah. The first, well, the last two that came out they're not the first two but like i want to play those so like this one doesn't really do much for me because we yeah. even played the other ones yet yeah i liked wolfenstein um the the reboot i guess you could call it i haven't played wolfenstein 2 but i would very mm -hmm. much like to again it boils down to my computer just not being powerful enough to to play those those sorts of games that's something i'm gonna have to address because i want a computer power powerful enough to play cyberpunk the way yeah. it's meant to be played so Yep. That is something I'm going to have to address at some point. Yeah, you and I got to make these computer upgrades soon. Yeah. So that's it. I mean, I don't have high hopes for Bethesda. I don't think you do either, Well, No. Yeah. Uh, next up on the list is Devolver Digital. So that'll be at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific on Sunday, June 9th. I literally have no idea what to expect uh, for this one other than chaos, cool indies, and murder. Yeah, I mean, this is one of those wild cards. I never know either. Yeah, uh, they, their press conference last year was wildly entertaining. Apparently, it's going to have the same uh, keynote speaker. Their their fictional, I, I believe it's CEO, uh, the the crazy woman. I don't know if you watched it last year, Will. Yeah, I did see it. I can't remember that. I can't remember her name. It's like Jane Struthers or something like that was, was her name. I just remember watching it and being like, what am I watching? <laughs> what is happening? Uh, and then cool indies that they showed during it. So, uh, like last year, I believe they announced my friend Pedro, um, which is a cool game that I'll at some point get. Yeah, yeah. No, I just remember watching it last year and thinking I wasn't on the E3 channel. Oh yeah, yeah. You're like, what? What is this? Where's the games? Yeah. Uh, next on the list is the PC gaming show, which is going to be 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. On Monday, June 10th. Also, I don't have any idea what to expect here. Um, maybe some new hardware announcements. I really have no idea because it's it, there's they can do anything with this. So yeah, I don't know hardware very well, so it's hard for me to get excited. I guess, yeah. but 
I'm sure there'll be something, a few things here or there. Yeah. Uh, a lot of it was like uh, game announcements that, that, you know, wouldn't get the, the attention during the, the bigger press conferences. So there'll yeah, probably be some of that there. updates. You know, there might be something from, from Blizzard with maybe World of Warcraft. I was uh, just classic. Say, but... I would love to see like, you know, an official date for that and when you can start pre ordering it. I'm, I think there I'm... is official date. Yeah, I think you're right. I think they just announced it. Um, but yeah, it, that's something I'm looking forward to for whatever reason. Yeah. No, I'm with you. I, I Like, if Blizzard comes in and be like, oh, here's like Warcraft 3, this is when it's coming out, like stuff like that, like I'm all for that. Yeah. Yeah, I would love to see that. Um,. Next up is Ubisoft. That's going to be 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific on Monday, June 10th. I expect we'll see some Skull and Bones, probably some Beyond Good and Evil 2. We'll probably see some updates for The Division 2. It's apparently been rumored that Ubisoft has three or four AAA titles to announce still this fiscal year, so I'm excited to, to hear what those might be. Uh, one thing we do know is there will be no Assassin's Creed announcement. There's not going to be any Assassin's Creed this year. So that'll be for next year, I'm, I'm assuming. Yeah, so one of them is going to be Watch Dogs 3. You think? Yeah, that, that's like one of the worst kept secrets oh, right okay. now that's going on. Uh, uh -huh. So Watch Dogs 3 is going to be one. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see some Just Dance, probably. <laughs> they always seem to sneak in Just Dance, yes. Yeah, and as you said, Beyond Good and Evil would be one too that's they're, they're gonna show off i kind of am interested to see what else ubisoft's got because they said they got all those unannounced stuff that are coming out this mm -hmm. fiscal year so uh i'll be interested to see what they pull off yeah uh yeah what it, i mean anything you want to see because i would i would like to see a few more ubi art framework games we haven't seen any of those in a while that's, that's true yeah. that's what uh valiant hearts and, and child of light were made on so i would love to see something mm -hmm. like that that would be cool a couple things um there's apparently a Ubisoft stream pass that mm. got rumored. Yes. Um, oh, I thought I put that in here, but I guess it didn't. Yeah. So they're apparently having a, a pass similar to EA Access or Origin Access. Mm -hmm. No details on that yet. It's a rumor at this point. But yeah, that's I'm definitely interested in that. Yeah, I mean, if I can play all their games for the price that like EA Access is, I'm all for that. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I was kind of against that sort of thing when it first started, but I feel like it's just a tool to use. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not expecting to pay for it all the time, you know, if just if they have a couple games that I want to play that I don't necessarily want to pay full price for because I'm not sure if they'll like them or I'm not sure if I'll spend enough time to spend an entire $60 on a game or whatever, then, you know, that's a that's a great way to, great way to do it. Yep, definitely. There's also rumors of a Rocket League-like roller derby game. Oh really? In the works by Ubisoft. Okay. Series I've, another thing. I I figured someone at some point would try to try to catch some of the the Rocket League. Uh, Wonder if I can wind find momentum. It. Here I'm gonna see if I can Google it really quick. Roller yeah. Derby. Ubisoft. Oh, I did have Ubisoft pass here, but I put it in the wrong section. I put it under Square Enix for some reason. Okay. Because I'm an idiot, probably. That's, no. That's most likely reason. Um, new Ubisoft game, Roller Champions League's title. Could be at E3. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah, just they have a ball, roller skates, and there's, like, a track. That's cool. I, Rocket League-style roller derby game. Interested, at the very least, to see what they come up with. I When I first saw it, I didn't know if it was just somebody messing with people. Yeah, like an April Fool's joke that you didn't hear when it first happened. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Um, apparently that what to like how to play it is leaked too. So hmm. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see if that gets announced. I'll cool. be for it. Yeah, I would definitely play that. All right. Uh, so next up is Square Enix, who is at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific on Monday, June 10th. Uh, I'm assuming we'll hear about Dragon Quest Builders 2 on Switch. Probably hear a little bit about Life is Strange 2 Episode 4. Um, just now, this was rumored up until today, maybe a couple hours ago, they announced that the uh, Marvel Avengers uh, Square Enix project will be there. Okay. Uh, I, is it Crystal Dynamics that's doing that one? 
Yeah, actually, I think you're I right. Think I think it is, is Crystal Dynamics. I think it's Crystal Dynamics that's doing that. So people are very excited for that. Um, that knocks the Square Enix. As, even though I'm not interested in superhero stuff or uh, Marvel or Avengers or anything, I'm still interested to see what they come up with. Just because Crystal Dynamics did such a good job with Tomb Raider. Yeah. Um, that at least, at least is something for me, you know. Um, I don't know if we're going to see any more of the Final Fantasy VII remake. I think we do. I think they said more in June mm-hmm. when they put out the most recent trailer. So I assumed E3. Yeah, so probably we'll see some of that. And outside of that, I don't know. I don't think we're going to hear anything about Final Fantasy 16. Ooh, I didn't even think about Final Fantasy 16. Probably some updates for Final Fantasy 14. Yeah, actually, I, Kotaki has been running articles about Final Fantasy 14 getting a big expansion and stuff yeah. like that. So, yeah, we'll see some Final Fantasy 14 stuff. Probably Kingdom Hearts 3 DLC. Yep, that's that's seems to be on a lot of a lot of people's uh predictions so i'm assuming they'll have something if square enix gives me all the details in the final fantasy 7 stuff that's all i want yeah i'm still I can do with whatever i'm still not jazzed on the final fantasy 7 remake see i am it looks it looks cool uh i don't like the episodic nature of it um but uh yeah we'll see i guess I'm interested. I hope they don't do it in three parts like the original game. Just two parts? Just two, yeah. yeah I mean, especially how much detail they go into. Didn't you say that it's going to be a full $60 for each part? Rumored, yeah. That's right, it's just rumors. Yeah, because they Hell haven't yeah. announced. The rumors for it makes it sound like it's going to be the best game ever, but <laughs> right. again, you never know. Yeah. Especially after all the development trouble it's apparently been through. Yeah, that's that's very true. Uh, so yeah, that's Square Enix. Not expecting a whole lot there, but we shall see. I always want to like Square Enix's stuff more than I end up liking it. Yeah. Uh, last on the list, Nintendo. Nintendo's Direct is going to be at 12 p.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific on Tuesday, June 11th. Um, we will no doubt see a lot from Mario Maker 2, uh, which is going to be due out at the end of June, so they'll probably go really in-depth with that. We'll probably see a fair amount of Pokemon Sword and Shield. Uh, we'll probably see some Link's Awakening stuff, because that's mm-hmm. supposed to come out later this year, so that should feature prominently. Uh, Fire Emblems 3 is coming out in August, so we'll probably see some of that. I'm hoping to see more Astral Chain. That's the J- big July release for, for Nintendo. Uh, so I'm hoping to see more of that. I'm hoping to see Luigi's Mansion 3. Uh, hopefully some gameplay and maybe a release date. Um, I'm hoping we see Bay- Bayonetta 3 and a release window maybe. Maybe early next year for Bay- Bayonetta 3. Uh, we'll probably see the next Smash Brothers character that's coming out with the DLC. Oh, heck yeah. And then I'm hoping we see the light version of the Switch to see what that's all about. Animal Crossing too. Animal Crossing, yeah. I forgot about Animal Crossing. That's one that I'm very, very pumped for. Yeah. Yeah, you and a lot of other people. I'm definitely interested in that one as well. Um, I, Nintendo easily has the most things that I'm interested in. Oh, definitely. Um, it's not even close. No, no, not for me either. But, I mean, that's largely because that's what I play the most, you know. I play games on PC here and there, um, but it's not convenient <coughs> or easy to do. Yeah, and a lot of the newer stuff I can't really play, so I play most games on my Switch. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. I'm trying to think if they've for anything else for Nintendo. I also, again, and I'll say I say this every single year, and I sound like a broken record, but I'm going to say it again. I love their treehouse format of doing things. So after they show little blurbs and stuff on their their Nintendo Direct, if you watch the treehouse stuff for the next three days, it goes very in depth. With all that stuff, a lot of times with developers explaining the thought processes behind the games and walking you through the game, so you really have a good idea of what you're getting when you when you watch that. You know, yeah. There's not going to be any surprises with any of the games that they t- they have featured on the Nintendo Treehouse. Yeah. No, it's nice because you get a lot. You get to actually see their games as opposed to it just being like, oh, they announced it. Who knows when we see it? Yeah. Who knows when we see it? Who knows what it's like? You know, like yep. th- they play them. Like for a lot of times hours, uh, like I said, with their their Nintendo Treehouse staff, and then a lot of times with the developers and stuff. So, 
Mm -hmm. Get it's a good in-depth look mm -hmm. of the game. Yeah. So yeah, that's the those are the main press conferences. Uh, there's a few odds and ends. We talked about Cyberpunk probably being talked about at E3. Um, gosh, there was one other big thing that just got announced. Let me see if I can find it. Um, it's not the Death Stranding, Last of Us stuff, is it? No, um, Death Stranding. That's did I put that in Nibble Bits? I don't. I have that for Nibble Bits. Okay. So. Um, crap. Let me just run through my news feed here real quick. I swear there was one other one other kind of big thing that wasn't part of the uh, you know the the press conferences. Yeah, Death Stranding got a got a trailer. Uh, oh, I'll let you talk about that because that's in your in your nibble bits. I'm uh, looking too. I don't know if I don't think I see anything. Dang it. I was gonna do a miscellaneous section on my on my notes and I didn't, and now I'm regretting it. Um. Anyway, whatever. We'll. I'm sure we'll cover it when the time comes. So. Yeah, if we find it, we find it. Yeah. Uh, so nibble bits. Will go ahead. Get started with nibble bits. First one, Death Stranding's coming out November eighth. Uh, with a nine minute trailer. I have no idea what this game's even about. The more yeah. I see from it, the more I'm confused. <laughs> yeah, I, I I haven't watched this trailer yet. I do plan on, on probably tonight after we finish uh, watching it. But yeah, I'm, I'm in the same boat. I don't I don't know uh, any any little <laughs> bits of the game I've seen. Like it looks like a third person action game adventure stealth. I don't know. This game better be the greatest thing ever because. I'm honestly kind of put off by how it gets shown off every time it gets mm -hmm. shown off. Yeah. It's just like, I don't know how to put it into words, but it something rubs me the wrong way. They're like, oh, look at this. This is the greatest thing ever yeah. sort of thing. Like they treat, I don't know. It just kind of bothers me. Like the fetus things, the teasers that we saw for like two years, like, I don't know. With, with weird imagery. Yeah, Norman Reedus, who I just think of Daryl from The Walking Dead anyway, so like that kind of spoils the main character for me. To I think be of, I think of Boondock Saints when I see Norman Reedus. <laughs> so yeah, yeah that that's even of... before yeah before he was Daryl in The Walking Dead. And does that kind of ruin the protagonist for the game for you a little bit? It's a little it weird. Does, it does for me. It's way too real. Yeah. So I don't know. As I said, this better be the best thing ever. This game. You know it's not going to be right. <laughs> it's going to be like my GTA and Red Dead. Yeah, I'm going to hate it, and I'm going to be the only one. <laughs> it's going. It's going to get eights. That's what it's going to be. It's See, gonna... I I think people are going to give it nines and tens, and it like Red Dead and GTA, and I'm going to play it and go. Eh. Yeah. All right. No, I I agree with GTA. I do really love uh, Red Dead. Red Dead Two. Yeah. Um, but I hated I hated Red Dead the first Red Dead. I hated Grand Theft Auto Four. I haven't played Grand Theft Auto Five. Um, so I, I'm I'm kind of with you there. Yeah, yeah, we we are on the rock star not being impressed with most of their stuff. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't know. As I said, this game better be awesome. I hope I like it, but I, I worry. Mm -hmm. But uh, so it will be out this year finally. Got a release date. The Last of Us Part Two is a, reportedly, and this is from Jason Schreier, who I pretty much take anything he says as gospel. Yeah. Because uh, he's one of the only investigative journalists within gaming. Yeah. Um, he's usually the only one that ever really breaks scoops, at least. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, getting pushed into early 2020, which is funny because I feel like I was hearing that it was coming out at some point this year and they're getting ready to put out a trailer for it. Mm -hmm. So who knows? But 2020 is when it's coming out. It's kind of funny because the PlayStation 5 is supposed to be coming out 2020. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if it Simultaneous is... launch. Exactly. If that's what they're doing for it, I why not really? Yeah. It's so late. Um. So th that's cool. Uh, I bet we see something from it here pretty soon. Another trailer because I don't think we've really seen too much of the game, right? No. I I remember seeing like a cinematic trailer. I don't. There was no gameplay. It was that one that people complained was too violent. If you remember that. God, that was a thing. What was it? What was it? It was on the. Was it the Game Awards maybe or, so Gamescom? 
maybe they had a press conference with it on and it was i'll admit it was pretty violent but you know you're expecting it's 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 the last of us like it's supposed to be violent yeah um, so <laughs> it, it was pretty Did violent you... uh but it still like yeah i don't if you're complain about your the heart, violence if you're pouring your heart and soul into this game working crazy crunch that they do at naughty dog and people are talking about this is way too violent yeah how would you feel uh I probably feel the same way I do about the people that complain incessantly about the Game of Thrones last season. It's like, give it a break. Enough. Yeah. Who cares? Find something else to like and don't complain about the things that I like. That's how I am. I just want people to like everything that I like. That's all I really they, well, they don't have to. I just don't want to hear they complain about it all the time. That's true. Just leave it alone. And sign petitions to get the... I'm not, e- I'm not even going to talk about it anymore because I don't want to... <laughs> I'm gonna pretend it never happened. Is what, it's done, is Dan. What I'm saying. It's no more Game of Thrones. That's that's that. well, that's fine. I'm I'm saying to redo the last season. You probably saw that. What the complaints? No, some people about a million people signed a petition to have the last season redone because they hated it so much. <laughs> when has signing a petition ever done anything? It's not only is it stupid, um, <laughs> but it's insulting. I think. To all the people that gave their lives to that, you know? That series, yeah. No, that's sad. Yeah. I don't know. I just have better things to do than do that. Yeah. But I no doubt will complain about something later in this episode because I am kind of <laughs> fired up today that's on that same plane. Not a problem. So, no, it's, uh, yeah, well, we got to complain about something. <laughs> but I to can't... the point where I'm mad enough to sign a petition to rewrite the le- No, that's not going to happen. No, God, no. I don't care enough. Yeah. Uh, my last nibble bit is the Spyro Reignited Trilogy is coming to PC. There is a listing for it, so that's awesome. I'm honestly probably going to buy it again. Mm-hmm. $40. I mean, it's, for that's a steal. Games. Yeah. Yeah. I still have to play Spyro 2 and 3. I played through the first one already, but I haven't done 2 and 3 yet. So. I used to think Spyro Run was the, 1 was the best one, but I think 3 might be the best one. Nice. But I don't know. I go back and forth. Uh, all three games are fantastic, though. Yeah. Uh, must plays. So uh, that's kind of it for me on Nibble Bits. I know there's more, but there's that Pokemon stuff that was all really weird. Yeah, I've, um, I'll talk about a couple of those things. <laughs> Perfect. I'm glad you have it. Yes. Uh, so I've got a couple of Nibble Bits. My first one is that the World Health Organization has voted in gaming disorder to its list of illnesses. So this is a quote from, I don't know if it was their report or their, their justification, but it's, uh, quote, a pattern of persistent or recurrent gaming behavior, which is digital gaming or video gaming, uh, which may be online uh, or offline manifested by impaired control over gaming, which is onset, frequency, intensity, duration, termination, and context, uh, increasing priority given to gaming to the extent that gaming takes precedence over other life interests and daily activities and continuation or escalation of gaming despite the occurrence of negative consequences. The behavioral pattern is of sufficient severity to result in significant impairment in personal, family, social, educational, occupational, or other important areas of functioning. Um, So that was one of the big stories this week in gaming. Um, I really don't know how to feel about this. It's like anything, you know, just... I'm, disorders yeah no i'm glad they called it a disorder not addiction because <clears throat> i'm i'm reluctant to call stig- anything that's not chemical related an addiction I, I you know that's just me you know like like well like if you're addicted to alcohol or drugs like you actually have a physical chemical addiction to it uh, a lot of people in the comment section said that, that that this is like a symptom of a larger problem which i i feel is the case yeah, you know, using definitely. video games to people use video games for all sorts of reasons. Some use it to combat depression, you know. So yeah, um, yeah. There's I'm glad they call it disorder it. and not addiction. I think that was a good a good call. Um, I know it's semantics, but I, I think the wordage here is important. So <clears> yeah, I'm with you on that totally. Uh, but yeah, I still I still like it. you always hear stories about people that you know ignore their kids or uh, there was that Chinese couple that left their kid in an internet cafe. And didn't pay the attention to them for like 26 hours which i'm like how is that even possible like what yeah. is wrong with you so i think there's deeper things there than just just be you know ha- be having a gaming disorder a there's, gamer, there's something yeah. else there um so 
Definitely, I'm with you on that one. But that's that's that. Uh, Journey is coming to the Epic Game Store starting next week on June 6th. Uh, it'll be at the price of $4.99, which probably means it's going to be a buy for me, even though I'm not jazzed on the Epic Game Store. Um, is it not on Steam? No. Really? It that's surprising. Not. Uh, the only way you can play on PC currently is PlayStation Now. Okay. That, all right. So I feel like I've been seeing rumors that it was coming to PC for a long time now, and I'm surprised yeah. the Epic Store is getting it Epic first. Epic Store is getting it first, yes. Uh, it will support re- resolutions up to 4K. After the sale, it will return to the normal $14.99 price. So definitely, definitely interested in that one. I still am kicking myself for not having played it yet, but... Um, yeah, for four ninety nine, that's that's impulse buy territory, no question. So even 100%. though I, I don't like the Epic Game Store, I'll, I will buy Journey on it. Are you? Are you gonna play this? This is off topic, kind of, because of the Epic Game Store. Are you playing Borderlands three on Xbox with us? Probably not, unless they have keyboard and mouse support. I'll do it with keyboard and mouse support. Dang it, Dan! But yeah, so disappointing. I know. But I, I mean, I, I can always be convinced. Like, if me and Corey are going to split it, thirty dollars. Even if I, maybe I can do a more melee focused or shotgun based. Fo- like, I can get up close to stuff and and oh, shotgun yeah. it to death, and 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 be okay with that. That's kind of what I did with Anthem. Um, I was more of a melee, melee type of character. I was yeah. whatever the heavy titan is. I don't remember now, but I can't remember either. Is it not Titan? Javelin. Yeah, basically Titan. <laughs> yeah, <I just laughs> uh, yeah. Titan from Titanfall. Yep. <laughs> uh, that's what ruined me for shooters in the first place. As I sat down playing Titanfall on PC, and I was like, I am learning how to play a shooter with a keyboard and mouse for this game. And then it ruined you forever. And then I couldn't, yeah, then I couldn't do it on a controller anymore. When did Titanfall 1 come out? 2013? Sounds right. I'm gonna Google it real quick, just so I can know how long you've been ruined. <laughs> uh, Titanfall One came out in 2014. 2014. Okay, so I probably had, I didn't have an Xbox anymore. Yeah, so you had a. I had a PC. computer. Yeah, so that probably yeah, factored into my decision. Yeah, because you sold your PlayStation or your Xbox because of um, Assassin's Creed Three. Assassin's Creed Three. Yep. Yeah. And you didn't have a PlayStation 4 anymore at that point either, right? I don't think PlayStation 4 was out at that point. Didn't the PlayStation 4 come out in 2015? No, it was out then because Titanfall was... We all played it on the... uh, It was on the new consoles. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. Um, Wikipedia. I'm pretty sure it came out in 2013. Yeah, 2013, November. Was when the PlayStation came out? Yep. Really? Yep. I had my PlayStation for almost a year. So yeah, you probably just recently I had probably had just recently gotten rid of it. Wow. That was a while ago. Yeah. You've had both consoles and but not at the same time. <laughs> yeah. I got my Xbox much, much after I got rid of the PlayStation 4. <laughs> yeah, five <laughs> years. Uh my last little bit. Uh it doesn't seem like anyone uses this but me, but YouTube gaming. Both the app and the the homepage are shutting down uh, tomorrow. The streaming? Yeah, the str- the streaming app. That's what that's what it was initially focused for. But everything's just getting merged right in. It's already there, available on the actual just legitimate YouTube app. Oh, okay. so um, the streaming on YouTube's not going away? No, 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 no. That's okay. not nothing of that's changing. They had its own. They had it's had its own separate uh, separate app that was just a hub for gaming specific stuff. Okay. Uh, that I use both on my phone and on my on my Chromebook, and that's how I watch gaming gaming content. Um, but that's that's going away now, so it's just going to be on YouTube, YouTube, instead of splitting splitting it up. So I was going to say, if they were getting rid of the streaming, how am I going to watch the illegal streams for hockey? Yeah, no, nope, that'll still all be there. Uh, and that's all I've got for Nibble. Oh, Pokemon Go Plus Plus stuff. Yeah, what was this? I, I didn't watch the whole announcement, but I read a little bit about it afterwards. So apparently they're trying to um, market Pokemon to 20-year-olds with sleep and 
yeah. the other one? So Nintendo was initially making a sleep tracking device. They canceled that. But somehow it seems like they rolled it rolled it into a device called Pokemon Go Plus uh, Plus and Pokemon Sleep. It's a mobile app that hopes to turn sleeping into entertainment and it'll work with Pokemon's new Pokemon Go Plus Plus device. Um, we're to the point now where we need to make sleep entertaining yeah it'll use an embedded accelerometer to track users time sleeping and send this information to their smartphone via bluetooth this new device also has the same functions as the original pokemon go plus so trainers can use it with pokemon go during the day and with pokemon sleep at night Uh, it's gonna launch in 2020 so i don't know how it integrates into the game what it's supposed to do when you're sleeping I don't know if maybe levels up your Pokemon, but like I have no idea what the integration is here. Um, but yeah, no, I don't. I think this is stupid. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I we were joking about it. it was last night or the night before, whenever the announcements were made, and I was like, yeah, I've already got my Fitbit telling me I don't sleep enough. I don't need Pokemon Go telling me I don't sleep enough too. You know. Yeah. So yeah, basically, the amount you sleep and when you wake up affects the gameplay essentially a sleep tracker that connects to pokemon go and pokemon go plus yeah there's really not many details but yeah because there was also that pokemon masters yeah which is just like another mobile game yeah it's just like there's trainers from the past and the present and like you build teams Hmm. that's really all people know yeah that was a weird weird couple of announcements yeah, and they announced that the next the Pokemon Sword and Shield Direct is, like, next Tuesday or something like that. So it was weird that they did that announcement, and then they're having another one. Yeah, that is weird. I guess I guess it's for the better. People would lose it if they <laughs> said they're having a Pokemon Direct. and announce Pokemon, sl- Pokemon Go Plus Plus and Pokemon Sleep. Yeah, there would be, there would be suicides. Yeah, riot, rioting in the streets. So yeah, I knew this was smart. People people would have trashed the Nintendo store in New York City. Oh god, yes. Those poor people. Yeah. Okay. Uh how was your week, Will? Uh good. I still feel like crap. I'm so tired all the time. Uh but I'm back to work now. Mm-hmm. Which boy, that I the return Saturday and Sunday and it was rough. I was not 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 with it, but I'm getting better now. Yeah. I'm losing most of like the sick symptoms other than the fatigue, mm-hmm. which is good. All I want to do is sleep. Um, so I've been doing that. Uh, I talked about how I watched Black Clover, which is an anime last week. I finally caught up now uh, to where it is. And the cool thing about this one is it's ongoing, and the Japanese version is on episode like 85, and the English one's on 82. So it's not that far behind. Uh, cause I know Dragon Ball Super has been done for like a year now mm. and the English part still not caught up. Wow. So that's really, really annoying. But I gotta say Black Clover starts out rough, but I think it might be my favorite anime. Really? Yeah. I loved it. it I talked about it a little bit last week, how it borrows a lot of stuff from other ones, but it kind of really deviates from, uh, from the rest of like the normal anime tropes that you see they're still there but they do like the thing that i'm always blown away with in that is how they do team fights they do that really well because everybody has different magic abilities so like one of the the main character asta doesn't have magic but he's got anti-magic and he can his sword cuts through every magic ability but that's a close range thing so he's not that good at a range yet so they're using one character who can cast portals throughout the battlefield, and another person had, like, thread magic, which can, like, attach to Asta. So, like, they're throwing him around the battlefield into different portals, and he's coming out of different spots, and they're, like, swinging him from place to place, and, like, he's attacking a monster up close. And, like, it was a really creative idea. Nice. Um, so they do a lot of really cool stuff like that. I really think it... The, the show got a bad rap because the main character liked to yell a lot. And was kind of loud and obnoxious, but they really toned that back a lot after like episode like ten. Mm-hmm. So I really think people should give it a shot and really give it a give it a go because I think it it's amazing. Really, I I really do love it. So um, it's to the point now where like I am excited every the episodes go up every Sunday. So like I'm excited Sunday night when I get home to be able to to watch a Black Clover episode now. Nice. So 
Um, it's part of my new routine, so people should check that out. But other than that, I've just been playing Felsio. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got a couple quick things to go over. Uh, first, watch the Game of Thrones documentary. I think it was called The Final Watch. Um, and it's kind of it's a kind of a behind the scenes of the filming of the last season. Uh, it's really really impressive what they were able to do. Um, yeah, and it's something you don't think about all the coordination that goes on behind the scenes, both for getting people places, uh, getting infrastructure places like bathrooms and food, and uh, you know one of the one of the battle scenes was fifty five nights in a row, like night shooting from. 10 p.m. to 5 or 6 o'clock in the morning. For months they did that, or a month and a half or whatever it was. Uh, So just all the coordination and stuff that goes behind that. Uh, They they followed closely um, a few different people. One of the guys that that specialized in making the snow for the show. Yeah. Uh, They followed some makeup artists and and people like that. They followed one guy who had been an extra, uh, an extra soldier throughout the throughout most of the show aaron uh, Rodgers? No, no it was not aaron Rodgers. oh it was it was it andrew mcclay was that his name um but he was like he was so so into it and and his roles and and stuff and he was like he had a little bit of screen time like here and there throughout the the seasons mm-hmm. um, but it was, it was really cool to see how enthusiastic he was about it um they didn't show too much of the main character stuff there was a little bit uh some of the characters final scenes they showed um, and then they showed some parts from the table read they did before they started like filming, uh, where all the characters were, you know, sitting in the, you know, on these big tables and, uh, showing their reactions to finding out what, what happens was, was really cool. Yeah. Um, but it's de- definitely, definitely watch it if you're into Game of Thrones. Um, it's, it was well worth, well, well worth the watch. It was, uh, it was very cool. So. So I have a question. In yeah. Game of Thrones, was there a scene where a dragon was scorching soldiers? Oh yeah, there's a few of those. Okay, because I think somebody photoshopped Spyro as the dragon. Oh yeah, yeah. Blowing the fire. <laughs> okay, so I that that was Game of Thrones. I thought it was, but mm-hmm. I wasn't sure. I got a good chuckle when I saw that though. <laughs> yep. Yes, that did happen. So that was cool. I'll get there. I'm gonna be watching Game of Thrones at some point. Yeah, eh, you know, give it at least give it a shot. If you don't like it, then can stop watching i imagine i'll like it i can't imagine i wouldn't yeah uh so there was that uh we painted our living room this past week we're finally getting sick of the and it's not down down here in the basement uh, but there's like uh, the all the walls in the house when we bought it were like a, a yellowish whitish color and it's just ugly and dirty uh we've painted my my oldest son and my daughter's bedrooms a couple months ago probably um, but finally, we're starting to like paint the rest of the house. So we painted the living room. We're gonna paint the hallway. The kitchen's coming up in the next probably couple weeks. Uh, and then we're gonna paint our bedroom. And then we just have to paint the twins' bedroom. And then the whole upstairs will be painted finally. Because um, it's everything, like even trim, is just this horrible, dirty yellowish whitish color. Blech, it's nasty. But it looks a hundred times better with with the paint on it. With a little more color added with, in. Yeah, with some color. And then uh, we took off the ugly shades that were on the window, the big windows in our living room and dining room uh, that made it look like a s- sleazy 70s motel. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a big change, and it looks looks a lot better. Uh, it feels like a, a new house, even though it's, it is a new house to for yeah. us. It feels like an even newer house, so um there was that and then my last thing uh i designed some thumbstick athlete shirts we did you not... really yeah i showed you uh wait oh those were shirts well they're they were i showed you the logo for the for the shirt so yeah gotcha, we haven't okay. had shirts in a good long while uh, i wanted to try to do like a logo for something that we like so i took the rocket league logo uh and i made shirts with them um I think I might change it a little bit before I, and I also want to order one and get it and see what the logo looks like before I, you know, make them available for people to buy. Um, but it's been a long time since we've had shirts, probably three or four years since we've had shirts for people to buy. So it's been a while. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to order one first and test it out and make sure it comes out. Okay. Before I, I, you know, make those available. Um, but yeah, it's, it's the rocket league logo, um, with the car taken out of it, obviously in our, our controller, on the shield part and then it says thumbstick athletes where it says rocket league it's came out pretty good i think i might tilt the controller too to make it look like 
it's hitting the ball. Um, but yeah, I was I was pretty happy with how it came out. So yeah, I actually thought it was pretty good. Corey and I were gaming and we're like, Dan, it's really getting into Photoshop. <laughs> it was uh, Paint.net is what I use. Paint.net. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I liked it's how it looked. Free, free Photoshop. So uh, I'll probably do a few other logos. Uh, you know, that turned into Thumbstick Athletes logo. Um, so yeah, I think that's all. I feel like I had something else, but. Well, whatever. All right, well, let's get into what we played. Uh, should we do a little fell seal talk? Yeah, we can do fell seal. Um, How far are you? I am eight. I've played about eight hours. Okay, gotcha. I just did the first seal. Okay. Um, and a, like one battle after that. So, okay. Um, I think- you, I forgot what temple that is, but yeah, like I don't the remember either. temple or something. <laughs> I don't, I don't remember either, even though I just did it. Uh, I really like the game so far. It's definitely a very uh, Final Fantasy Tactics esque game, but yeah. I actually think I like some of the classes in this one more than I like the Final Fantasy Tactics classes. Yeah, the classes are way cooler in this one, in my opinion. They're a little bit more um, fun because, mm-hmm. like in Tactics, it's like oh, the samurai, the lancer, but in this one, like you can get a character that can imbue his blade to do debuffs. Yeah, like, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Now, like my, I've been using Kyrie as a war mage right now. Okay. So like with the secondary of the marked class, so mm-hmm. like I've just been attacking for like 200 damage with like my staff of fire or water, and like nice. it's crazy. So it's a lot, it's a lot of fun to mix and match. Or, like mix and match different abilities and cool cool stuff that they add in this game yeah i really really dig it so far um and it didn't take me long to get into it either like that first battle that i did i was like oh my god this game's awesome and then i i slowly like started to learn some of the systems a little bit like i like how you upgrade items uh that's really really cool um so yeah I just love it, uh, but we'll we'll have an episode on it next week. Uh, but yeah, so far, uh, very 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 solid first impressions on on Fel Seal. I'm gonna have it try and have a beat by next next week. I would I'm... like to. I don't know if it's gonna happen, but I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna maybe I'll put in a late night of of playing Fel Seal. So. I don't know how long it is. Oh. Corey said thirty something hours. It wasn't on how long to beat, so or it hadn't been last time I checked. Um, checking checking on steam yeah but it, yeah it's on steam it's on playstation 4 and it's on xbox it needs to be on the switch because that would be the perfect platform for it i bet it would sell buttloads on the switch yeah i mean some people are saying 20 some people are saying 60 <laughs> yeah, it probably depends on how much grinding you do which i've done a little bit of yeah i've been grinding a lot of the classes right now uh because like I, there's a lot of classes that i wanted to get because i looked them up like the like the assassin and stuff like that like yeah. i wanted that or mage the secret classes so uh-huh. i've been doing that stuff so i've been grinding a lot and like i'm six seven eight levels above like the story stuff right now oh, so nice. uh, which yeah. makes it easier too i like being overpowered and i do too through the, the stages yeah I, I like that way more okay anything else you've been playing will I played Persona, but I had no idea what was going on. Sure. Is it a continuation from the previous Persona games, or is it its own story? I think it's its own story. Okay. Yeah, we we have zero experience with the Persona series. Zero, so. What I will say is, yes, there will be me playing a lot more of this, but as of right now, my one hour... Basically what happens is this main character, who I don't even know his name... Because I think you could name him, actually. It's Joker. You play as Joker for people who are played Smash. Mm-hmm. Uh, he gets kicked out of his school for sticking up for somebody, but like he got into a fight, and that person was a powerful person. And you get basically kicked out of school, and your parents have to like send you to another area, to another school, so you're living with somebody else. After that, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> okay. So... Yeah, that's. Uh, I will be playing that. I want to beat Fel Seal first, I think, before I go back. Okay. Yeah, especially so. since we're 
at least probably doing an episode on that. If for whatever reason Corey can't join us, we'll wait because I mean he was the one that got us into it. Yeah. Um, he bought it, or I think he saw it somewhere and bought it and played it. He streamed it too, which I, I enjoyed because I, I watched it and I was like, I'm gonna play this. So that's when I played it and loved it. And it turns out it's really good. It turns out it's really good. That's right. Good job, Corey. We actually listened to him this time. For once, yes. Still have not played Enderall, but I did play Felseal. Nope, no Enderall yet. <laughs> His game of the year, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, it was. All right, anything else, Will? No. I, like I said, just working my way through the backlog games while simultaneously trying to play new games. Yeah, I hear you. It's been a lot. Um, the... question, do you know what's even coming out Like that is worth playing? Mario Maker Two at the end of the month. There's yeah, a Mario. few. There's a few indies that are coming out soon that I'm I'm interested in, and some stuff to the Switch. Um, but I don't think anything big's coming out anytime soon. I want to play that Total War Three Kingdoms, but that's got to wait until I get a new PC. Yeah, not just that, but the, those games are are really really long and in depth. The only reason I'm even interested is because of Dynasty Warriors. Yeah, it's the same. Uh, so... Same historical era. So that I'm gonna probably get Crash Team Night or er, Racing, oh, okay. probably Mario Maker. Yeah, I'm calling Fire it the list right now. July, and a July, but so that's a ways away. Oh, Fire Emblem! I thought Fire Emblem was August. Basically August, July twenty sixth. Oh yeah, it is July twenty sixth. Astral Chains in August. Maybe that's what you were thinking. Oh, of. I got them switched. Yeah. Honestly, they're not a whole lot really coming out. No, so June, yeah. uh, Persona Q2, if you have a 3DS, that's that's interesting. Um, Slay the Spire on Nintendo Switch is June 6th, so that, that was one of, the, one of the indies I was talking about that I'm going to get. Um, yeah, that and Mario Maker 2 are probably the only games in June I'm going to get. July... Fire Emblem, definitely. But I'm, I'm not really seeing anything in July. No. I'll Maybe be... Wolfenstein. Yeah. What's Control? Don't know. It's a Remedy game? Hmm. Third person shooter action, action adventure. Uh, Rad is what I'm going to get. Rad? That's from... Um... Oh, dang it. Double Fine. Okay, the so, roguelike. Yeah, that looks really, really interesting. Uh, obviously, Astral Chain I'm going to get. And then it is September, Borderlands 3. When is that Maybe. Baldo game have a release date? Does what? I don't think that Baldo. I don't think so. There seems to be like a lot of games that are supposed to be coming out this year, but none have been like confirmed, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. There's a there's a lot of stuff on the on the maybe list for 2019, unscheduled Ooh, Rad. releases. Rad does look pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Double fine. They do good stuff. Yeah. Uh. So the only other things I played other than Fell Seal was I played a little bit of Smash Brothers Ultimate. Uh, my son wanted to fire it up again, so we played a little Smash. It took me a little while to get back into the controls. Um. But I found that my I had my inkling, you know, my inkling was my main. Um, I was better with her than I thought I would be after having not played in four or five months, probably get four a, months. Get a get a little break and you get that skill going again. Yeah, exactly. Way better. Yeah, if I if I spent maybe another hour, I would probably be close to where I was when I stopped playing. Uh, but yeah, I played some of the World of Light. I still have to finish that because I want to get a beaten game for that. Um, and that's really fun. And I beat some of the stuff I hadn't wasn't able to beat when I was playing it before. So, so that's good. But that yeah. game's that game's so good. Hundred percent. Yeah. I well, I gotta get back to World of Light and beat it. Yeah. Uh, and then the only other thing I played is my son wanted to play Snipper Clips, so we played a little Snipper Clips together, which is a really fun puzzle game that I also have to finish. I still like playing games with a child. It's fun. He uh, did a lot better in Snipper Clips than I thought he would. 
that's gotta be such a rewarding feeling to just yeah. like this is my spawn that i'm playing this with yeah oh yeah it's it's great um they keep wanting to have mario kart we we do mario kart maybe once every two weeks mm-hmm. uh, they ask us like when it's literally time for bed instead of asking us like right after we put the twins to bed it's like you know 8 45 and they're supposed to be getting in bed and they're like ah, we want to have a game night we want to play mario kart like, like nope it's time <laughs> ask us 40 minutes earlier and we would have said yes they just don't want to go to bed no it's one of their stall tactics for for bedtime smart move yeah and unfortunately sometimes we fall for it (laughs) you gotta sometimes you gotta well it's mostly because we don't have the strength to fight with them all the time about everything it's like okay fine yeah (laughs) yeah we lack the the stamina oh hey dan i forgot to bring this up in nibble bits cadence of hyrule is supposed to come out Oh, that's week. right. Yeah, I'm kind of interested in that. I'll see what that's about. Looks I think cool. it's a rhythm game, but yeah, it's it's from the makers of Crypt of the Necro Dancer. And I have no rhythm, but I'm still interested. Yeah. Uh, people love Crypt of the Necro Dancer, so the only because nice I'm looking fit. through, I was just looking through the unscheduled releases and saw Cadence of Hyrule, and I was like, oh, that's right. Yeah, that's that's that they just announced that's next week. I think the sixth also maybe. Did that get an official? I don't know if it got an official. Oh, right now it's just next week. Roll release date. There's rumors that data leaked uh, for Thursday, May 30th. Oh, tomorrow. Huh. Yeah, I guess so. I guess we'll see. Nice. It'll be tomorrow okay uh anything else well i think that's everything right everything we played yeah uh the html source code was now changed to june 20th okay so the end of okay. the month. so end of june okay cool yeah because that looks interesting yeah all right um feedback let's get into feedback uh so we got one piece of feedback which is once again from idaho jake who says hey guys I'll take Serious Sam BFE for his, his game win from last week. He says, the only thing I have uh, for predictions is we will see more old games from past E3s. Yeah, probably. Probably. <laughs> then, then new games, he said. Uh, thanks, guys, and have a great night. Yeah, yeah he's probably. so right. Uh, one thing we didn't cover, what what games do you think we'll see remastered? There's apparently a 4chan leak of Assassin, the original Assassin's Creed, but they did say that they're not doing any Assassin's Creed this year, so... As or cool any as new that's... Assassin's Creed. Yeah, I get Yeah, no, that's a good point. Yeah, the, the, the verbiage, or the, the, the way they say it is important. You know? Yeah, that's a good point. I would be all aboard on uh, Assassin's Creed 1 remake. That would be amazing. Yeah, because I really, I mean, I love the first one. I spent a ton of time playing that back in the day. And, like, I, yeah, I haven't even gone back to that game since the first, like, playing it the first time. So, like, I'd be all aboard that. I guess the the PlayStation 4 and Xbox, well, actually, no, the Xbox One X is the only one that does it. But the uh, Ubisoft put out a patch for 1 and X capabilities. So it's like a graphical upgrade. Oh, really? For yeah. uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey? No, the first Assassin's Creed. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. So. That's cool. I'd be interested to see what that looks like. But, yeah, no, I'd be all for that. I I don't know any game that'll get remastered. That's a tough one. Because you never really know. Yeah. And it seems like the ones you expect to be remastered aren't. Yeah, like, how has the Mass Effect trilogy not been remastered? I don't know. That's a war crime. <laughs> it really is. At least, you know, remaster the first one into the more modern combat system. Put like them out, yeah. Three. Put them out on the new consoles. Like, why Why not? Like, I don't get it. Are the Mass Effect games available for Xbox One backwards compatibility? They are, yeah. They are. But, okay. like, Sony, as stubborn as they are, they can't do that. Yeah. I don't know. Just put them out. Do a very minor graphical overhaul. Yeah, like I said, if they could re- at least redo the first one with the the combat system from 2 and 3, that would be amazing. 
Oh yeah, that'd be the best. And fix the Mako parts because they were pretty bad too. <laughs> That's part of the charm of the first one. <laughs> bad Mako play. Yeah, I mean, at least if you could like save your progress during it. So if you died, you didn't have to do the whole freaking huh. thing over again. Yeah, that was brutal. Maybe put the hover tank in there instead of the, the Mako. Yeah. All right. Anything else, Will? Yeah, that's all I got. Okay, so Jake is the winner. Winner chicken dinner again. Ugh. Let's, oh, I've got my laptop so I can do the. Do I got one on this, and I can send him his game. I got one twenty-seven as my first game. All right. Oh, come on. I should have had this ready to go. All right. So, Jake again. 127 is the Swapper. Hey, that's good. That's a good one. 93. 93. Puzzle Agent 2. Okay, that's not bad either. 125. 125. Monaco. I like that game. I think Eric hated it, though. Yeah, it was, it was good. 11. 11. Contagion. Not bad either. 145. 145 is gone. 14. 14. Gone. 120. 120 is Symphony. Wow. Six. Nope, we're good. We got five. Oh, really? Yep. 127 is the Swapper. 93 is Puzzle Agent 2. 125 is Monaco. 11 is Contagion. 120 is Symphony. So let us know what you want, Jake. Uh, I will get Serious Sam BFE sent out to you probably now, pretty soon here. And let us know what, what you want for next week. Uh, yep. As for next week's episode, as I said, we are going to be doing Felseal. Uh, at least on, unless Corey, for whatever reason, can't do it, then we'll, we'll push it back another week. Uh, maybe even two weeks because we'll have to do our E3 recap for wednesday's episode in two weeks i think uh, we make fresh. him record it next week he's fine yeah, yeah i agree <laughs> just do it Corey. don't he mess just, up our plans just do the main segment i don't think we should push fell seal another two weeks no i agree and we should get out because i i really think people should play it it's that and good. it's a game that i bet people who really like it are looking for content on it and it's not really being covered i yeah i agree so. Uh, and once it comes to the Nintendo Switch, I think it's going to be really popular. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you 100% on that. It's literally the perfect game. And I, I know I say that a lot, but it's literally the perfect game for the Switch. Maybe we'll get Final Fantasy Tactics on the Switch, too. No. Nah, you're right. <laughs> All right, that'll do it for episode 410 of the Thumbstick Athletes podcast. I'm your host, Dan. I'm Will. Thanks for listening and get out of my basement.